Southern African off-road calendar. Damage from the Civil War two years ago was still being repaired as the scene was set for the final round of the MSA South African National Off-Road Championship, the 33rd Pirelli Lesotho Sun Roof of Africa. So welcome to this part of the The service area was a buzz with activity as competitors and their crews completed final preparations for what promised to be one of the toughest events in years, while local public interest was running high. After seven rounds, Neil Woolrich and Kenny Schulthammer had already wrapped up the overall production vehicle category, but Class E was still up for grabs with the Birkin brothers, Andrew and Chris, in their Toyota, level pegging on point with Mitsubishi pairing Noel and Robin Quinn. It was a winner-takes-all situation with the Birkins narrowly ahead on wins, 3-2 to two so far this season. The vehicle's definitely up to it. We really, the guys have put a lot of work into the vehicle. The vehicle's been completely rebuilt before this event. Um, the route is very rough. Uh, there's places that you have to keep your head together, place yourself very well, but there's some places where you must push, and that's when you make up your time. Nissan Motorsport had wrapped up the Class D Championship in the last round, the Caledon 400, with Hein Probler and Charles Volmerans taking a runaway victory in their hard body. While overall champions, Woolrich and Schulthammer, would be swapping mounts to debut a Class E Ford racing Ford Ranger. It's great to be able to come to the Roof Africa with that championship sign up because the Roof Africa is such a hard event. Uh, anything can happen here. You can have four seasons in one day. So it's nice to uh, not come here with all the pressure of the championship. And uh, we also here on a new vehicle, which is very exciting. Uh, we had, um, as you know, worldwide, there'd been a lot of changes in the motor industry, and Ford Motor Company lost the Mitsubishi agency. So uh, we had commitments to our sponsors, with Pirelli being one of our main sponsors and actually sponsoring the Roof Africa. We felt that we needed to be here, and Ford have very kindly helped us out with the Ford Ranger. We built the car in a very short time. It's a very, very standard motor car. Uh, basically just put all the safety features into it and decided to come and give it a good run at the roof of Africa. We're really looking forward to it and it's going to be an exciting event. In the special vehicle category, the consistent Shamir Variawa and Bucks Carolyn were leading both the overall classification and Class A, while single-seater specialist Hill Nell had already won Class B and was in a strong position to challenge for overall honours. Three times roof winner Richard Schilling would pair up with his partner from their 1992 victory, Ashley Thorne, in a race car. It's actually an old car. It's a 12-year-old motor car. I bought it from Greg Harvey. It won the championship, I think, in 91. Had a Porsche motor, but as you'll notice, I'm in Class B. I'm using a Nissan 2-litre motor. I really want to have some fun. I think I've done what I need to do, but uh, the roof is just such a special event that uh, I'd like to see if we can do the B car. Apart from the Variawa Carolyn combination, former winners, the veteran pairing of French Chepek Senior and Junior, were in with a strong chance. Entering the fourth decade of racing, we've been in and out of racing. We've um, raced the first race in 1970, won it for the first time in 76, did it again in 77, then we had a bit of a break, raced bikes for a while, got back into it again, uh, won it again in 97, won the specials in 94 category, uh, lost it last year by one minute. So we are in the running, so hopefully, we've had a bit of bad luck this year, but hopefully our bad luck is finished, and it seems to be finished, and hopefully we'll have a very good roof. The weather's fantastic. Everybody seems in a good mood. It sounds like it's going to be a good race. Day one, and the Class A special vehicles led the field off the line at the famous Busutu hut for the traditional round the houses in the streets of Maseru. This gives the spectators the opportunity of seeing the competitors from close up at speed, while it also determines the starting order for the start of the time trial later in the afternoon. A network of existing and yet to be completed new roads were used for the round the houses, excluding the traditional polo field. Not a lot of rain had fallen over the Macero area in the previous weeks, so a lot of dust was kicked up by the cars as they jockeyed for position in the three-lap race. Duncan Foss of touring car fame was there to support his Nissan Motorsport teammates, probably having a good laugh at the spectacle of off-roaders trying to find racing lines and passing spots. While the thundering special vehicles provided a good show, most knew that with some 1,000 kilometers of the toughest terrain ahead, this wasn't the time for any heroics. The crowd and the local military certainly enjoyed it, as Bevan Bertholdt and Atang Mahakaneni took the honours in their speedstick racing race car. Mark Corbett and Juan Moore in their gym car was second quickest. 
Next up, the Class T Super Trucks in the production vehicle category with former roof winners Avi Reinecke and Robin Houghton in the Castrol Toyota dealer team Land Cruiser and Cliff Barker and Vic Kampfer in their privateer Land Rover leading the field. Reinecke and Houghton were in the relatively new Land Cruiser which had made its debut on the Caledon 400 where they finished an encouraging third after a season fraught with niggling reliability problems in their old car. Shortly after the start, Hannes Hrobler and Richard Leake in the Nissan Motorsport hardbody came past to take the lead. Hrobler would set the quickest time in the round the houses, with Reinecke some 13 seconds slower in second. Barker and Camper were still going strong, as was the Jeep pairing of father and son, Arthur and Scott Abraham. Class D champions Hein Hrobler and Charles Volmerans set a very respectable time in their one-tonner, while Hrobler and Leake took the flag to finish fourth overall. It was clear who the crowd's favourites were. After the two top classes in the special and production vehicle categories, the rest of the field had their chance to show what they could do in the streets of Maseru. In their brand new Ford Racing Ford Ranger, 2000 production vehicle champions Neil Woolwich and Kenny Schulthammer will still settling down, and they were not about to take any unnecessary risks. Peel Nell, on the other hand, was quite comfortable in his trussy with its golf engine, and he swept into the lead soon after the start. Andrew and Chris Birkin in their Toyota Hilux needed a good starting position and also went past the Ford. At certain points on the course, the dust was really becoming a problem, and drivers had to tiptoe through, making certain not to crash into the back of the vehicle in front. problems for Gil Nell as he won the round the houses in this group after the relatively easy street race the real business of off-road racing would soon get underway join us after eight competitors on a 60 kilometer loop mainly on the Berea plateau east of the capital Macero although still relatively easy compared with the terrain over which they would race the next two days there was plenty of potential for disaster Franz Chepek senior and junior in their Epson V motors Chenoweth were almost a minute faster than their nearest competitors Second quickest in Class A of the Special Vehicle category were John Weir Smith and Jeff Minnett in their dark dog-backed Porsche-driven race coat. Greg and Fred Douse in a similar vehicle were just 24 seconds slower in third. Quickest in the time trial in Class B, Schilling and Thorne in their Motortech race coat with its 2-litre Nissan motor. Quite a way down, but second in class was Fricky van der Linde in his Dayglow Orange golf-driven Sandmaster. Warren Clarsen and Kim Dixon and their appropriately named Rock Buster with its Alfa Romeo engine came in third in class B. Multiple touring car champion Geniel de Villiers and Pete Swanepoel in their class D Nissan hardbody were fastest in their class. With the demise of the touring car series, de Villiers is seriously looking at a change in his career to off-road racing. Nas LaRue and Cornel Jonker set the second fastest time in the time trials in their Colt Rodeo. Class champions Hein Probler and Charles Volmerans had lost more than 20 minutes and would start way down the field, so third quickest were Pete Hasbrook and Christo Bosch in their Toyota Land Cruiser. E, where the championship would be decided this weekend, Jean-Pierre Joubert and Errol Hodgson in their Char Lynn Freight Toyota TDI set the quickest time. Just behind them, joint class leaders Andrew and Chris Birkin in their Toyota Hilux. This gives you a good idea of what an easy route looks like. The Birkin brothers knew that the smallest mistake could cost them the title, so no heroics here. Some four minutes slower and third in class in the time trial, the other title contenders, Noel and Robin Quinn, in their Mitsubishi Pajero, also with the same strategy in mind. In the Super Trucks Class T of the production vehicle category, Reinecke and Houghton set the fastest time in their Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. They were followed by former off-road champion Hannes Frobler and Richard Leake in the BP Nissan Hardbody, who were keen on getting the new vehicle its first victory of the season. 
Although Hrobler was pushing hard, he was also wary of making a disastrous mistake before the event proper had started, so they were just more than a minute slower than the Land Cruiser and would start fourth overall and just watch that hard body accelerate. Third quickest, the mean-looking Jeep of father and son, Arthur and Scott Abraham, who would end up eighth overall after taking into account the round-the-houses times. So, on aggregate times, the Chepex were quickest and would start first on the road on day two. With the top special and production vehicles well mixed up in the top ten, the lines were drawn for an intriguing battle over the next two days. Off-roaders believe in the early bird adage, and before the start of racing section two, the atmosphere was friendly, if somewhat tense. Also present, His Majesty King Letzie, the third of Lesotho. Many of us look forward to the rally every year, and we are delighted and very, very happy that uh, uh, for 33 years uh, this event has been taking place in, in our country. It is a great uh, source of pride and joy for us, uh, not only here in Masuri, but throughout the country. And uh, uh, it places on the international map. Racing Section 2 consisted of two loops over roughly 500 kilometres east of Macero, with a service point at the end of each loop. Franz Chepek felt upbeat. It's uh, quite nice to be out in front because you're not going to suffer with the dust, but then again you're going to suffer with the uh, route finding, which is quite difficult, you know, because it's quite difficult to mark here in Lesotho, and, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll find the route and hopefully we'll stay in front. Behind the Chepex, Api Reineke knew what he had to do. The roof is a very dangerous place and uh, we're doing the same route tomorrow so we'll take it easy today and see what's the route like so that we don't have to end up in uh, one of these dongas. Echoing Reineke's sentiments, John Weir-Smith. I think today we just need to take it fairly easy. Um, it's uh, a long way, it's very, very rough out there. Um, we had a bit of a good run yesterday and uh, there are quite a few dangerous holes and, and, and clips and, and that sort of thing out there. So I think take it fairly easy and, and uh, just keep it on the road. And Hannes Hrobler. It's a long way. I mean, it's still 1,000 kilos. It's probably only going to start tomorrow morning, you know, so we're happy if we can be at the same place tonight. We'll be happy and then from to, uh, tomorrow we'll take it on, see if we can make it. A thousand kilometers still ahead indeed, but the one thing that had not been thrown into the mixture yet was the weather. Dry, if somewhat dusty conditions greeted the competitors as they got down to the serious business of racing. Franz Jeffek Sr. and Junior had not had a good season at all and held a slender 18-second lead over the Reineke Houghton combination at the start of racing section two. The multiple former champions had also suffered from reliability problems throughout the season, but things were looking better. We are Smith and Minutes in the Dark Dog Porsche Race Co. started at a steady pace, as did Frobler and Leek in the impressive BP Nissan Hardbody. With less than a minute between each of the top crews on the road, the dust was turning out to be a bit of a problem. The starting order hadn't changed as Greg and Fred Douse in their Porsche Race Co. maintained fifth position. It was still early days. Having started a mere 17 seconds behind class champions Variawa and Carolyn, Bevan Berthold and Atang Mahakaneni in their speedstick race coat were pushing as hard as conditions allowed. Often competitors were literally within touching distance of each other, but the rocky surface and the dust made passing difficult. It was still way too early to get adventurous, so Daus and Variawa were treading carefully. Despite a stomach bug, which would later put him out of the event, Arthur Abraham and his son Scott were going strong in their Jeep Cherokee, maintaining eighth on the road. Up to ninth on the road, Mark Corbett and Juan Moore in their Jimco, who had one class win under their belt this season. They were looking for a good result to challenge for second in the class championship and had already passed John Moore in his Miller Moore Honda racing Y2K fishbowl. That's horsepower of a different kind as we catch up with the field halfway through the first loop. Still leading, both overall and in class A, Franz Chepek, senior and junior in the Epson V Motors Chenoweth. 
Class B leader, Hale Nell, who already had a finishing record of four class wins, a second and a third, in seven starts this year. The little trussy with its golf engine was looking virtually spotless and sounding smooth as Nell negotiated his way over and through the obstacles in his path. In Class D, Janil de Villiers and Pete Swanepoel in the BP Nissan Hardbody were maintaining their class lead, securing the knowledge that they didn't have to push too hard, as class champions Hein Krobler and Charles Volmerantz were still way down the order. Leading Class E were the brothers, Birkin, in their Toyota Hilux. They had already passed Jean-Pierre Joubert and Errol Hodgson on the road, and were opening up a gap over their title rivals, Noel and Robin Quinn, in their Pajero. Still at the front of the super trucks were Arpi Reinecke and Robin Halton in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Their third place in the recent Caledon 400 had given them hope that at last their reliability problems were over. The Chep X and their Epson V Motors Chenoweth accelerated out of the first service point, still leading both overall and in their class. No problems for them, while the Reinecke Halton combination had suffered from some punctures. For most competitors, it was a welcome break, while their service crews jumped into action to carry out the necessary repairs. We'll have in the second loop with Franz Chepek Sr. and Jr. still leading Class A. The Epson V Motors Chenoweth had run without missing a beat, and the crew were driving with great confidence. Up to second in Class A now were Mark Corbett and Juan Moore in their Jimco, having started fifth at the beginning of Racing Section 2. They had taken advantage of various problems suffered by their class rivals and were looking solid. Up to third, from fourth in Class A were Bevan Bertolt and Atang Mahakaneni in the Speedstick Racing Raceco, who'd overtaken Greg and Fred Douse in their Porsche Raceco. While they were pushing hard, Richard Schilling had joined the ranks of the spectators after he and Ashley Thorne had retired from the race. Still going strong and leading Class B, the ever-consistent Heel Nell in his home-built, golf-driven trussy. He was ahead of Francois Smith and Nick Clarsen in their Sandmaster, and Archie Sally and Peter Ferreira also in a Sandmaster. A change on the road in Class D, with Pete Harsbrook from Freiburg and Christo Bosch in their Toyota Land Cruiser now in the lead. They'd gone past early leaders De Villiers and Swanapool, as well as Nars Larue and Cornel Jonker in the Colt Rodeo, the rough terrain causing all kinds of problems. As always, the local spectators shout at all the necessary encouragement. The De Villiers Swanapool combination in the BP Nissan Hardbody had lost some time due to problems like punctures, but were still holding down second place in Class D. LaRue and Yonker had also lost time and were running third on the road, but everybody knew that there was still a long way to go and that anything could still happen. Even so, they were trying to regain some time. The Birkins were still driving a steady race in their Toyota Hilux, leading Class E for standard production vehicles. If they could hold on to this position, they would take this year's Class E championship. But it had started raining some 120 kilometers from the end and the surface was getting slippery at places. Up into second position in Class E now were the main title rivals, Noel and Robin Quinn, in their Mitsubishi Pajero, who'd started the day with a deficit of some two and a half minutes on the Birkin brothers. This battle was far from over. Down to third in class were Jean-Pierre Joubert and Errol Hodgson in the Char Lin Freight Toyota TDI. Arby Reinecke and Robin Houghton were still comfortably in the lead in class T in their Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Apart from the odd puncture, the pair had suffered no serious problems and were looking strong. Behind them on the road, however, were Cliff Barker and Vic Kampfer in the Land Rover who'd been forced to fight their way up the order from the back of the field after losing a wheel in the time trial the previous day. Down to third in Class T were Hannes Krobler and Richard Leake in the BP Nissan Hardbody, who'd lost more than an hour after getting stuck in a ditch. Fortunately, they didn't suffer any serious damage and they could set out to make up the lost time. Although the sun was still shining on various parts of the route, the clouds were gathering, threatening heavy overnight rain. At the end of day two, Franz Chepek Sr. and Jr. topped the results sheet, ahead of Corbett and Moore, with Berthold and Mahakaneni leading Reinecke and Houghton. The weather's going to be a problem today. We didn't expect this. The rain was only supposed to come this afternoon. 
but it looks like we're going to drive into the rain, which is very bad for the specials because, you know, we can't see all the wheels throwing up mud. Uh, there's no fenders, rain comes in, mud comes in. Following exactly the same route as the previous day, the Epson V Motors Chenoweth led the way in extremely muddy conditions. The competitors started in the order and with the time gaps set on the previous day, and they knew that a very difficult time lay ahead. Bertolt and Mahakaneni followed Corbett and Moore, making a very gingerly start. Behind them, Arpi Reinecke and Robin Houghton leading the production vehicle category. In this type of weather, you can slide into one of these dongas or into a river, get stuck and all sorts of things. So it would be endurance to get through today. And uh, our plan is to keep our heads together and say that we can get the car to the end of the, the race. If we can do that without delay, we have a chance to win this race today. Well, no gingerly start for them as the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser sped away. But at the front of the field, the Chepek combination here, still going strong, would be the first major retirement of the day. The overnight rain had swollen many of the rivers on the route, which added another danger to the already slippery surface. The Chepeks would succumb to electrical failure. Corbett and Moore slid their Jimco out of control into a ditch where it would stay for at least 10 minutes, despite the enthusiastic help of some of the bystanders. Not even the knobbly off-road tyres could give enough grip for the vehicle to be pulled out of the relatively shallow ditch, which was an indication of the perils faced by the competitors on the third day of this year's Pirelli Lesotho Sun Roof of Africa. And it wasn't only the vehicles that struggled for grip on the muddy, gooey surface. Poor old Juan Moore looked like a first-time ice skater as he tried to get back to his vehicle. Out on the road, production vehicle leaders Reinecke and Houghton had passed Bevan Berthold and Atang Machacheneni as conditions continued to get worse. Many rivers had swallowed to such a level that it was downright dangerous for competitors to attempt to cross them. Greg Harvey and Boy Stone in their castral backed Jimco were also treading carefully. They were looking for a good result to consolidate their second place in the Class A Championship. Andrew and Chris Birkin were still holding on to their overnight lead in Class E, knowing that nothing less than a class victory in their Toyota Hilux would ensure them that class title that they'd fought so hard for during the season. Despite the desperately tricky conditions, they couldn't back down for a second, while at the same time an accident would be a disaster. Behind them, Chenille de Villiers and Pete Swanepoel in the Class D BP Nissan Hardbody were making good progress. They were second in class overnight, but had started some 10 minutes behind the Class E leaders and were catching up rapidly. In the Class D battle, de Villiers and Swanepoel were trying to close the gap of just more than 11 minutes that they were down on, on Haasbrook and Bosch in their Toyota Land Cruiser. Unfortunately for the Class D leaders, the conditions would catch up with them later, and they would lose almost 25 minutes to drop to third in class. Probler and Leek, third overnight in Class T in their BP Nissan Hardbody, could only hope that conditions would catch out the Reinecke Houghton and Barker Kampfer combinations ahead of them, as they had a massive deficit to make up after their problems of the previous day. On many stretches of the course, the vehicles bunched up in order to help each other out of the mud should they get stuck, and windscreens misting up from the heat inside the cabin added to the problems. Noel and Robin Quinn were trailing the Birkins by about 25 minutes overnight in their Class E battle, and were also hoping to get to the finish. Barker and Camper in their Land Rover would strike trouble before the end of the race, just another in the long list of retirements. So for the Woolwich Schulthammer pairing in the Ford Racing Ford Ranger, who drove consistently well and would finish ninth overall and third in Class E. The Rue and Yonker would take Class D in the Colt Rodeo. While Kutsia Labaskachny and Pete Hunus would finish in their Class E Toyota Hilux, the same could unfortunately not be said about Heel Nell and his Golf Trussy. Electrical problems due to excessive moisture were the cause of most of the retirements. A sorry sight as early leaders Franz Chepek Sr. and Jr. are towed by Harvey and Stone. The Epson V Motors Chenoweth had succumbed to electrical failure. As the weary drivers, co-drivers and vehicles that were left entered the service point at the end of the first loop, it became clear that it would be too dangerous to run the second loop as planned. 
Most of the rivers had flooded and it would be too dangerous, so the clerk of the course decided to cancel that part of the race and to run the first loop a second time. By now, the field had been thinned down to just a handful of vehicles, with Arvi Reinecke and Robin Hausen leading overall in their Class T Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. With even them struggling in the powerful 4x4, it was anybody's guess as to the final outcome of one of the most difficult Roof of Africa events in recent memory. Mark Corbett and Juan Moore had driven a magnificent race in their Jimco to move up to second place on the road, with the pair seemingly oblivious of the problems bedeviling the rest of the field. Having already taken two class victories this season, a third one was definitely looking on the cards. Then, drama struck as race leaders Reinecker and Houghton were crawling along at snail's pace, just eight kilometers from the end. The Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser had struck a rock while crossing a river, causing serious damage to the left front suspension. They had wedged a large stone in between the suspension components to keep the vehicle balanced and crawled over the finish line, having given up the lead to the Jimco. This was a dramatic end to a dramatic race, and the Land Cruiser pair's dogged determination to finish epitomized the true spirit of off-road racing, and they were greeted with loud approval from the crowd at the finish. Reinecker and Houghton did enough to win the production vehicle category, although these results are still subject to confirmation due to protests after the clerk of the course's earlier decision. Mark Corbett and Juan Moore were ecstatic with their first overall and special vehicle victory in a field that was decimated by the adverse conditions. Theirs was the only special vehicle among the classified finishers. Special vehicles don't really race production vehicles, but it is good to be the first car home, first vehicle home. Yeah. I would say it was a very difficult day. You know, we had to cross about 25 times the river, and every time we get out of the vehicle, walk through the river, see how deep it is, feel where the rocks is to get on top of the rocks, because you end up in the loose sand, you get stuck. And also getting up the mountains with all the mud. Lesotho Sun, Roof of Africa.